by him to convene this press conference. We all have a shared outrage and common goal to end the hate-filled violence that is plaguing our nation. I also want to thank Representative Brian Higgins, who represents Buffalo and just returned from that area this morning. His leadership is greatly appreciated in the face of this unspeakable racist attack. It is heartbreaking to stand here today, just days after 10 innocent lives were taken in Buffalo, New York, in a grocery store by a gunman espousing white supremacy, uh, supremacist views, and hatred towards African Americans. This devastating massacre took me back to June 17, 2015, when another white supremacist gunned down nine parishioners at Charleston's historic Emanuel AME Church. In the intervening years, we have witnessed far too many other acts of domestic terrorism from a counter protest in Charlottesville, Virginia, to a synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to a Walmart in El Paso, Texas, to a Sikh temple in Oak Creek, Wisconsin, and an Asian-owned nail salon in Atlanta, Georgia. All told, over 200 mass shootings this year. To be sure, all these shootings have not been racially motivated or motivated by hate. But all of them share one thing in common. They are all committed in a country too tolerant of irresponsible regulations of weapons of war and a proliferation of firearms of mass destruction. The Domestic Terrorism Prevention Act we passed yesterday is long overdue. It would enable the Justice Department, the Department of Homeland Security, and the FBI to prevent, investigate, and prosecute cases of domestic terrorism more effectively. I and many of my colleagues standing with me today know what it is to experience acts of racial hatred and witness events of domestic terrorism. We cannot continue to turn a blind eye to white supremacist vigilantes. It impacts all of us while the gunman in Buffalo was aiming for people who looked like me, others who did not look like me fell victims to this evil act. Shortly after my first meeting with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. back in 1960, I met with one of my professors, Ms. Rosa Harris, to share the Saul to Paul transformation I was experiencing. Two days later, Mrs. Harris handed me a copy of Dr. King's 1958 book, Stride Toward Freedom. To share one passage from that book, I quote, true peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. The Domestic Terrorism Prevention Act will provide federal agencies with necessary tools to help ensure that peace and justice prevail. But we must do more. We must acknowledge this country has a problem with race. Until we do that, we cannot address the cause of these racially motivated crimes and we cannot find adequate solutions. I'm pleased now to yield uh, to the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, Congressman Joyce Bader.